Or there we are. Okay, we're good to go here now. Uh, yeah, last time we got together, we we did chapter one, and we only got to uh, verse five. Uh, we're not rushing through. There's a lot in this book, a lot in this chapter. So I think what we'll do is uh, I'll start off. I'm going to read verse six, and then, Ron, you can follow me, and then uh, Dan can follow you. Okay. And we'll, we'll just read through to verse 14. Okay. And we'll, how, and we'll see how far we get, and then if we got time, we'll go from 14 to the end. Okay, I'll start us off in verse 6, and then, uh, Ron, you'll have 7. Yeah, okay. Like we'll rotate. All right. To the praise of his glory, grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Making known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, which are in heaven and on earth. In whom we also have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, after hearing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after believing in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And we'll stop right there. Boy, there's there's a lot in this little portion we just read here. I just, sure. I'm, I'm overwhelmed when everybody was reading. There's uh, such beautiful things here. As Christians, boy, we have uh, we have a great hope in Christ. So as we start out in this section here, we start out with praise to the praise of His glory, a, a, a praise to His glorious grace with which he blessed us in the beloved. We have been blessed in Christ, in the beloved. And last week we looked at a lot of our uh, blessings. Uh, Ron, you asked the question, what are some of our blessings? And, and we could just go on and on and on and on. Yes. <laughs> We've been blessed with so many things. Um, I like your, I like the way that verse six ends uh, in the beloved. The yep. fact that the Holy Spirit refers to Jesus as the beloved lets me know that all of that praise and worship that's going on in heaven around the throne and around Jesus is not slavish adoration, is mm -hmm. not... Trump is not a uh, labored adoration and praise, but it, it is loving, adoring praise. He is their beloved, not, yes. not, not just the king. He is beloved. To me, that means that they are in love with Jesus and out of love, they are worshiping him. And I think that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, everything is in Christ Jesus. And I, I like what you said about the Spirit uh, saying that we are blessed in the beloved. You know, that's, uh, that's right from the Spirit of God. He was loved of God. He was beloved of the Father. You know, like the Lord said in the baptism, you know, this is my beloved Son and who I am well please uh, you know 
In Matthew chapter 17, <clears throat> we have another time on the Mount of Transfiguration where the Lord Jesus, where he was up there with uh, Peter and John and Elias and Moses, Elijah and Moses were there and the Lord Jesus. But the voice came out of heaven saying, this is my beloved son, hear mm -hmm. him. And yeah. be accepted in the beloved. How are we accepted? Because of the beloved one. Mm -hmm. And we are accepted because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And so we are accepted in the beloved. We are made equal with him. We are made partakers with him. Mm -hmm. And so accepted in the beloved. Amen. And it, all of that is so fitting. We know from First John that God is agape love. I mean, how 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 fitting that the God who is agape love would be beloved. You know, to me, warm is a love to me. Heaven is a warm, happy, loving place with love and affection flowing freely between the people in heaven. Uh, to me, what a beautiful place. What a wonderful place to read. Surrounded by love. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's something to hope for. And we see in verse 7 that uh, we have redemption through his blood. So when we talk about redemption, we had been sold. We had been placed in a position that was far off. We were placed in a position of, um, I can't think of the word. Um, anyway, a position of, um, I'm sorry. Nonetheless, we had to be purchased. We had to be bought back. And so we are bought through his blood we have redemption through his blood and we read in peter first peter 1 18 uh, for as much as you know you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot and so we who had been sold into sin we had been sold into slavery we were redeemed through his blood. And because we are redeemed, we have forgiveness of sins according to his grace. As we read further on in chapter 2, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And so it's not something that we earn. It's not something that we are able to boast about any effort on our behalf, but it is a gift. And as we read in Romans, um, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, for had he worked, it would have been out of debt. And so there is nothing that we can work for. We are forgiven because of the redemption we have through his blood according to the riches of his grace mm -hmm. and what his grace is getting what I don't deserve. Yeah. You know, one thing we have in, you know, in our chapel, our hymn books and in our hymn books, I, I've got them in the other room. Otherwise I'd share with you. There's a lot of different hymns about redemption uh, in, in our hymn books. And one of them is redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. And, you know, when we think about the value of things, you know, silver and gold, I uh, I don't have enough money to buy gold anymore. I mean, uh, the price has gone way up. But I, I have bought some silver, and uh, I, I've got it like you'd have, you know, a savings in a bank. Uh, and the price of silver has gone up since I bought it. So, I mean, I'm not losing money on it. But the value, we put value on things. And 
we cannot even put a value on the blood of Christ. What yeah. it cost God to save us, to redeem us. Uh, and like you say, buy us back. He had to pay a price to buy us back. And that price was the death of his son. You know, we think of the story of Abraham offering up Isaac, yet God stopped him. And Isaac asked the question, Father, here's the wood and the fire, but where is the lamb? Uh, or where is the sacrifice? And Abraham just said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And you can play with words, but it meant that God was going to be the sacrifice in the case of uh, Christ going to the cross. Now, in the case of Isaac, there was a ram caught in a thicket, and they used that as the sacrifice in place of his son. Well, Christ took our place. He was crucified for us. We deserved that. So when we say we're redeemed, we were saved from going to the cross and dying for our sins, which wouldn't have done us any good anyway, because it had to be a uh, a sacrifice without spot or blemish. It had to be sinless. And Christ was the only sinless one. You know, people know of the, you know, Christ dying on a cross, but they don't apply the blood. It has to be applied. Just like when the Israelites, when the uh, angel of death passed by, they had to put the blood on the lintel in the uh, doorpost. Uh, and that was uh, to protect them from the, the death angel. And uh, so we have to apply the blood of Christ. And one song that we sing, are you washed in the blood of the lamb? You know, and truly we need that cleansing from Christ's blood. It's a, a spiritual uh, process. It's not something physical. We don't get in a bathtub full of blood, but we are covered in the blood of Christ spiritually when we apply the blood. Amen. Redemption. So, Herb, which hymn book do you use? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Dan. Which hymn book? do you use or hymn books well we've got a couple of them we use uh we got the red book and the black book <laughs> the, the, book, the yeah. black book with the um, hymns of worship and remembrance yes that's it and the red book would be um um yeah it was a precursor to the praise praise hymnal yeah okay yeah. I think we probably have the same books that we're talking about. In fact, we're talking about, uh, in, in our next church meeting at the end of the month, we're talking about getting a, it's a blue hymnal, and it's just come out, and just about all the hymns that are in the black and the red hymnal are in this blue hymnal. There's only a few that were missing, and... Uh, I don't remember which ones they were, but, uh, and then there's some, some newer ones. Now, there is some hymns in there that were questionable because of doctrinal uh, aspects. Yeah. We got to be careful with, uh, with our hymns because uh, we can teach false doctrines through our hymns. Right. Yes, indeed. Yeah. In fact, there is some hymns that we just don't sing because they're not really, uh, you know, sound in doctrine. <laughs> A lot of the newer stuff is that way. You know, that um, that uh, two-step in verse 7, I worked at a prison. I was a teacher, remedial education teacher in a prison in California. 
And it makes me think of the prison situation where um, the, the redemption through his blood to me is the prisoner who is, re who is released for, uh, legitimately from prison and he's standing out there in a parking lot. He's been redeemed from the prison, but he's out in the parking lot alone. And then the verse, the next part of the verse is the forgiveness of sins by grace. And you know, the grace would be someone there welcoming him with open arms. It's a two step to me with this redemption by blood and forgiveness by grace. Um, you you can't have one without the other to complete it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I see the prisoner redeemed by, you know, we're redeemed by blood. The prisoner's redeemed by the courts. And we the, the, the forgiveness is when he's out there in the parking lot, someone comes with open arms, welcoming him, forgiving that he's forgiven. It's as if he had not done the crime. You know, and to me, uh, having worked in that situation i can really appreciate the the two-step on this because i see a lot i saw a lot of prisoners who were who were redeemed and they were released their time came out and they came out of the prison they were redeemed but there was no forgiveness waiting for them mm -hmm. and we have forgiveness waiting for us through jesus that, to me that's precious yeah I used to be in a prison ministry myself and uh, in town right now, I'm known as the only one who got thrown out of jail, not in jail. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I had made a mistake and they were looking for a reason to remove me, I guess, uh, because I had said to the warden, <laughs> She, you know, she was a female. I had said to her one time, uh, you know, I preach uh, all these inmates, but I says, you need the Lord too. You need to repent of your sins. <laughs> and and I mean, I, I and and from that in, from that point on, she looked for an excuse to get rid of me, and right, uh, right. Uh, she found one. I broke one of her rules unintentionally. Yep. Uh, one of the turnkeys happened to live next door to me, and one of the girls that was in the prison there was uh, her folks lived in the house right behind me, and I said, "Boy, it's a small world." I said, "We all live in the same area," and uh, that was a no-no. I wasn't supposed to tell where the turnkeys lived, <laughs> so I mean, it was a mistake. I did make it. But uh, they called me in the next day and out or out I went. So I was yeah. thrown, I was thrown out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> I mean, it, it's funny, but it's I happen to get in a lot of different Bibles. Uh, I used to belong to the Gideons at one time, and uh, so I got a lot of Bibles into the prison there. So. Well, anyway, let's get back to the scripture. Uh, verse 8, we've been lavished, you know, which he lavished upon us. I like this wording. Uh, yeah. In all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ Jesus, Everything is in Christ. It's in the beloved. We can't right. get away from the fact that if we took Christ out of the picture, we have absolutely nothing. According to Vine, it says, um, talking about a bound, it says to provide a person richly so that he has an abundance of spiritual truth so when we abound we have been provided with an abundance of spiritual truth mm -hmm. when we we are so i like the word lavish that's a wonderful word um we are 
the um, the blessings of our Savior are poured out upon us. They're lavished on us. It's um, it's like they can't put it on thick enough. They can't make it rich enough when they when you are lavished with something. It's just beyond a normal thing. And so we are. We have He abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. So the Lord Jesus, he lavished himself upon us. Mm -hmm. That he purposed in himself. And that in is off slopes, uh, translated as, could be translated as by. So in and, in and by himself, you know, it, he, he is the sole savior. Uh, there is no salvation in heart from any other, and everything was set up to go through and by him. And you know, um, the people who try to get around Jesus uh, are missing so much, uh, especially missing the truth. But Jesus is central, it's his show, and if he's the star of the show, and he is the he is the meaning of the show of grace and love. Yeah, and we don't even know all the things, uh, but he is making known to us th this mystery uh, according to his purpose. And he's revealing it to us a little at a time. And it all, uh, uh, the only way I can explain this, and it's it's kind of, a bad explanation in a way, but we're we're in a box. God is outside that box. And all we can think about is what's in that box. And that box is called time. So we're in this realm of time, and God is in the realm of eternity. And everything that he does, he looks at it from an eternal standpoint. And everything that we look at, we look at it in a time element. And it says in this very next verse, as we come to, uh, as he had planned for the fullness of time. So there's going to be a point where this box is going to be opened, <laughs> and we're going to be we're going to be in eternity, and we're going to see things. Uh, an eternal way and and but these mysteries are only in part they're not we're not getting the full meaning of everything that God has in store for us and and it's for the future but yet we're still blessed right now it's it's a done deal I mean, it's not something that uh, is going to be future, but it's the present. But we don't feel all the blessings or see all the blessings until the box is open. Uh, now, I don't know if that's a good explanation, but uh, that's the only way that I can try to understand the eternal being of God. Yep. You know, I, I, um, I feel sorry for the folks that miss the centrality of Christ. Uh, uh, I don't know how the other translations do it, but it says he might gather together in one. Well, of course, from what we read here, in one means gathered together in Jesus. Jesus is the one in, wh in whom all things are gathered in his plan and grace. You know, the centrality of Christ, you cannot get around him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking but, at, no, go ahead, Dan, go ahead. I was just gonna make a comment on the dispensation of the fullness of times. <clears throat> One of the things that's incredibly difficult to comprehend is there you brought out so well God dwells in eternity we dwell in time and so we have 
the fullness of time in the dispensation of the fullness of time and I heard an illustration one time. It's like you have an iron bar that comes up and makes a, a turn and it goes to eternity. And then you have another one that comes back and it turns and there's a little gap between the two of them and that's time. And the two others are, one is eternity past, one is eternity future. And the dispensation of the fullness of time is that little fragment that's between the two. And so it's just this little shrapnel or fragment of time that he gathers everything together in one in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, it's, it's interesting to me that it's, um, I think there's more to it than just human beings i think that there's the entire creation is gathered together and um, i've been much struck by the how little we enter into creation how you know we read in romans chapter 1 verse 20 that the invisible things of god are known by the things which are seen even his eternal godhead even his his power and eternal godhead and I think, you know, we we take so for granted the weather. We take so for granted um, the, the moon, the sun, the stars, the plants, mm -hmm. uh, the animals. And yet God created all of those things. And um, he's going to gather together everything in Christ Jesus. And uh, outside of this little fragment of time and it'll be in eternity future yeah I was just going to share some something out of the Lord's prayer and the Lord's prayer is not the our father that's our prayer that was given to us but his prayer is in John 17 Yes. Verse 8 says, For I have given them the word that you gave me. And it's speaking to the Father. He's, you know, the Lord Jesus is praying this now. And they have received them and have come to know the truth that I came from you and that they have uh, believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me. Talking about the disciples here now. For they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, and that they may be one, just as uh, Ron was talking about, uh, that they may be one, even as you are one. While I was with them, they I, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. Uh, I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction or perdition uh, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and they, these things I speak in the world uh, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word and your, uh, and the world has, hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the Holy One or the evil one. Then they are not in the world, just as I am not in the world. Sanctify them. In other words, set them apart in truth, which your word is truth. 
as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself uh, that they also may be sanctified in truth. Now I come to this verse here I want you to hear. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And that's us. We have belief. So all of this the Lord is praying uh, is for all of us. Uh, and then it says in 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know you, that you have sent me. I make known to them your name, and I will uh, continue to make it known that uh, the love which, which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. When we talk about being in Christ Jesus, it's it's so deep. And Christ tries to explain this even in his prayer to the Father. And he's, he prayed for us. And just think about this. The God of the universe prayed for you and me. Uh, and why? We do not deserve it. And in fact, this is what this is all about. And he purposed this, which he set forth in Christ Jesus. That's what we're reading about. All is of God, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I, I'm overwhelmed. I really am. Amazing. What a mighty God. I, I like I like what you said, uh, Dan, about that little moment, that little period of time, the fullness of time, when time comes to an end, and just before eternity starts, that's going to be a moment <laughs> that we will never, never, ever forget. That'll be something that we will remember for all eternity. Amen. Verse 11, it says, we obtained an inheritance. How did we obtain an inheritance? Usually, somebody has to die in order for you to get an inheritance. <laughs> yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ died that we might have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And then we see that we're predestinated but what are we predestinated to? To the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. So we are predestinated or we are predetermined according to his purpose. Not my purpose. We are predestinated according to his purpose. I don't know if I read it or if I heard it, but God has had the church in his heart since the beginning, even before the beginning of time. Amen. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, I love the um, totality, the absolute, all-inclusive. He works all things. You know, not some things, not most things, but that he works all things, including uh, Stalin, Khrushchev, uh, Hitler, um, Idi Amin, uh, the uh, guys in Iran. He works, he's working, he's working uh, all of them according to his purpose. It's like he has them on a leash. 
He has all these people, all of us, on a leash. And we can only do what he allows in his grand design, in the totality of his plan, which is so important for someone to believe, like today, when the world seems to have gone crazy, when mm -hmm. the world seems to be out of control, uh, the military scene is out of control, the monetary situation is out of control, the border's mm -hmm. out of control. Um, it, it's such a comfort to know by faith that he is, all of that stuff is on a leash and it can only go so far in his plan and in his control. And to me, that is a great comfort because, I mean, I can understand that he he works all things. Well, that included uh, Paul being whipped, Paul being stoned, tall Paul being left for dead. All of those apparently harmful, painful experiences were allowed by him and were under his control. And I'm sure they were all in keeping with this promise in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. But the fact that he works all things, it's all under his control, no need to hit the, hit the panic button. And we have his promise in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that we will not suffer more than he enables us to bear, but we'll make the, a, a, a way out of the suffering that we'll be able to endure it. You know, uh, thank God for his leash, for his control and his promises. I think what um, in Proverbs we read, um, a man devises his ways, but the Lord ordereth his steps. And I think what we what we fail to understand is man has a free will, and <clears throat> we can make choices. We can do, and I I completely concur with Ron that. Um, the Lord has us on a leash, except I would probably say that the Lord has us on a um, an elastic leash because he allows us to stray off. And the further we get, the more tension there is to pull us back. He's always there. He's always steady. And we can, we can veer off and we can go, but he always brings us back. He always pulls us back. Yeah. But having will nothing we can do or nothing we will do will thwart the purposes, the eternal purposes of God. And um, I think that's one thing that we need to understand that we have the, the freedom to make choices. And yet the choices we make will, will be, there's consequences for the choices we make, but yet none of the choices we make will forfeit the uh, eternal purposes of God. Mm. Well, I know we can really have quite a conversation on that one word, predestined. Predestination is taught in the Bible. Yes. And there, there's a lot of people that have problems with that. Yep. Because God has predestined some to uh, salvation and some to damnation. Uh, and at the same time, the Bible teaches uh, responsibility, the responsibility of man. Now, people will say, well, there, if there's some that are predestined, how could you make a rational choice if you've been predestined a different way? Now we're getting into the mind of God and getting into his way. And we cannot comprehend all things that are of God. That's the only way I can explain it. Uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, you know, Calvinism and Arminianism, all these isms. Uh, and, you know, we can sit and argue about these things and debate them. And it, it's to me, it says, don't do not do that. Uh, you know, the Bible teaches us not to uh, 
uh, debate over these things. We are to just accept them by faith, just like we accepted our salvation by faith. Now, uh, when I was reading out of the Lord's Prayer, it talks about the world will not understand this. And if you're thinking worldly, you're not going to understand the things of God. You <laughs> better think the way God thinks. And uh, so we've been predestined according to his purpose in him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. It's all about God. It's not about us. We're just, we're, we're created beings. We're creatures. And we have to realize that God is so far above us. And when we come to realize that, we will start to understand this portion of scripture. And I have it all highlighted. And I'm going to read this last part. So that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, okay, might be to the praise of his glory. In him, now it's always in him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that that uh, Holy Spirit being sealed with him, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire the possession of it to the praise of his glory. It's all God, all Christ, and it's all for his glory. So God did this. And we who do not deserve it, because once we get into the next chapter, which will be sooner or later, I hope, <laughs> uh, it will talk about, uh, you know, being chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Why, you know, we were the same as the world. Yet he picked us, he predestined us to be the adoption of sons uh, and we received this inheritance in Christ uh, it's all uh, it's all of God not of us amen it's all of God yeah. and nothing in my hands I bring only to the cross I claim <laughs> I think what um, what happened go ahead Dan Mm -hmm. What happens, I believe, when we uh, we look at things from a finite standpoint, from the standpoint of man's wisdom, and man's wisdom, we can't find out God by man's wisdom. And I, I appreciate what Irv said about, um, you know, it's all about Christ. It's all about God. And it doesn't matter how it works we are to give him the glory we're to give him the praise and somehow god in his infinite wisdom and in his infinite understanding in his just complete infiniteness free will merges with god's will and it's for god's glory Mm. I'm um I'm Presbyterian Baptist enough to um, treasure the one word in the predestination discussion and the the word for new. Uh, we're there in Romans eight, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom He for new, He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he had predestined, these he called. Whom he called, these he all justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. And that whole list starts with foreknew. And I thank God for his foreknowledge. He knows ahead of, of who's going to do what, when, and where. 
Excuse me. Where I talked about the Holy Spirit uh, was given to us. Uh, the promise of the Holy Spirit was a guarantee for our salvation. He sealed us. And that seal was the Holy Spirit. And if we read in John, it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not the world gives. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Lest your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away. And I will come to you. If you love me, uh, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you uh, before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you will believe. I will no longer talk much with you. Uh, but it, but it talks, I missed a part here where it says, uh, and these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. Not only is he our guarantee and our seal of salvation, he's our teacher, our guide. Uh, if Christ would not have left this earth, we would have not gotten the Holy Spirit. Uh, right. I believe this. He says it's, it's expedient, it's needful for me to leave so that the Holy Spirit will come. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Uh, when I first became a Christian, I was only a Christian a short time, uh, something happened. I had some visitors come to the house. One of them was a Christian, and uh, it was a woman I worked with, but her husband was not a Christian. And I just so happens I was reading my Bible, and I was, like I say, I was not versed uh, in the scriptures very well because I was just a young believer but I was studying the word of God I was reading it I had my bible open when I had to knock on the door I answered the door and they came in now I'm not going to go into why they were there but uh her husband says he noticed the bible was open and he says do you study the bible and I says yes and he started asking me questions. I didn't know how to answer him. So I just went to the word of God. And I didn't even know where these, these verses were. But I had marked my Bible up somewhat. So I was kind of flipping from here to there. And I was answering all his questions. According to what God's word said. It wasn't right. the word. It was his word. Right. And when it got all done. It was like I was in a battle and I was all wore out. And when, <laughs> it, and when they left, I was just, I was exhausted. That's the only thing I can say. And I look back at that and I know for a fact it was not me. Yep. But it was the Holy Spirit that God had given me that directed my path and where I went. You know, as a young believer... I always remembered this, that my words mean nothing. Right. It's God's word. It's his word. That's why we have the scripture reading. It's the word of God, the scriptures that have all the power. So when we read verses like this, where it says, uh, and you were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the uh, uh, acquisition uh, or until we acquire possession of it. So until this actually takes place, we have this guarantee. Now, I know I think I brought last week, I talked about that piece of paper I got in my 
little strong box that when I die and go to be with the Lord, my wife can go in that box and there's a slip of paper that says she's guaranteed $10,000 to bury me in whatever because uh, she's got to rely on that guarantee. Well, our guarantee is from God and we cannot go wrong. It's a right. lot more valuable than that piece of paper in my strong box back there. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, I need to go, guys. It's been great being with you. But well, I tell you what, we're right to our end, so we're just going to close in prayer, Dan. You got time to close? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Our God and Father, now we thank Thee for Thy loving kindness to us, and we thank Thee for the provision that Thou hast made in the giving of Thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank Thee now for this time in Thy Word, and we commit all things to Thee. Bless these brothers and go with them through the week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, next time we get together, Dan, we'll start off at verse 15. And we'll, okay. We'll try to finish uh, chapter one next time we get together. Uh, All right. So it was great having everybody. Great having you too, Jim. Uh, Lord bless. <laughs> Till next time. I'm God gonna, bless you. I'm going to end this. Okay. Did you want to say something, Ron? No, I want to I wanted to thank you. I want to thank well, you for your ministry. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Uh, that's all right. And thank you thank for you. being here. Yeah, Jim. Thank okay. you. Yeah, next time we'll see you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.